Catherine Arwadi Broadwater graduated from Capital University in 1975 with a bachelor's degree in art education. Dr. Broadwater taught in the Baltimore County Public Schools for many years. She came to Towson University as a member of the art department in 1996, where she serves as director of art education. These are her reflections. Dr. Broadwater, thank you so much for taking your time to come and talk to us about your own preparation to become a teacher and your career in education. This will add greatly to our understanding, not only of teacher education across time, but also in areas outside the somewhat traditional elementary, early childhood, secondary ed. And I guess a good place to begin is in the beginning. So would you share with us a little bit about your early social context, where you grew up, what kinds of thoughts you were having about what you'd do after high school, and maybe even a thought or two about a possible career. Okay, it's nice to be here. Um, I grew up in Baltimore. Uh, actually, I lived on Pelham Avenue. And when I was about five years old, my parents moved into the Towson area. And I, um, we were waiting for uh, Hampton Elementary to be built. Hmm. And I ended up uh, going one year, or part of a year, I can't remember, to Lutherville. And then we, Hampton opened, and I started out in a brand new school hmm. with Dr. Merriman at Hampton Elementary School. And uh, loved that school. Uh, had a lot of fond memories. And, uh, and then I went to Towson Town Junior High School. And which is now Carver School for the Arts, mm -hmm. and uh, that was an interesting experience. Can't say that I loved junior high school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry to say. Uh, well, I think that's <laughs> true were, of a lot of early adolescents. But I did have some very good teachers there, and then I went to Towson High School, and uh, had my beginnings of wanting to be a teacher, and especially an art teacher, at Towson High. Uh, my teacher was James Drake Iams, and Dr. Iams, or I, guess, I don't think he was a doctor actually, but uh, Mr. Iams was, uh, had a huge influence in my life. Uh, he was the first person to say that he thought that I would make a good art teacher mm. because I was always walking around the room helping other students, and uh, he mentioned that to me, and I think that really had a lot to do with why I decided to become an art teacher, uh, it's amazing the power of encouragement. Mm. And uh, the other thing is that um, I was mentioning to you earlier that in my high school yearbook, uh, in 11th grade you had to write down the different clubs you were in and, and different things and what your hopes were for the future. And so in 11th grade I wrote that I planned a career in art teaching. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I just think that's significant. It is, absolutely. <laughs> So, so you're getting towards the end of your high school career, and what are you thinking in terms of after high school? Well, it's funny, um, because Towson University was in my neighborhood, uh -huh. um, I did not want to go in my neighborhood no. if, I, uh, if I had other options. And I ended up going to Capital University in Columbus, Ohio, mm. and mainly because I had, uh, for years and years, I had worked at a camp in Whitehall, Maryland, uh, which was part of Lutheran Social Services, and it was a camp for underserved children. And I worked there almost throughout my whole high school, uh, time, time in high school in the summers. And most of the teachers, I mean most of the counselors, excuse me, that were there were recruited from Capital University. So I was introduced to uh, some of the nicest people I ever met and um, ended up taking being an art education major at, at Capitol, it was a small major there, and having a wonderful, wonderful group of professors, and also uh, taking classes at Ohio State, which they had a reciprocal program. So any courses that Capitol didn't have, we could uh, take a bus and go over to Ohio State and take the courses there, mm -hmm. which we did quite a bit. I took quite a few art history courses over at Ohio State. So um, that, 
that was a really wonderful time for me. However, it was also during the Vietnam War and mm. the Kent State. I, I went to Kent State to visit uh, and go for a march there after the uh, students had been killed there. And I was very politically active, as most of my friends were, um, in the uh, early 70s, late, late 60s, early 70s. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that was a very unique time in history now that I look back. Indeed. And I think that um, we were passionate about um, being a part of things, understanding things. And uh, I, 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 I've, I've noticed trends through the years since then as I've been a teacher, but I've never seen a group like, or a movement like that movement, mm -hmm. the peace movement. Mm -hmm that occurred uh, during the late 60s, early 70s. So, so and when you were at Capitol, mm -hmm. you were an art education major? Yes, and I was very involved in all aspects of the university. I was a member of the swim team for four years. I was on gymnastics. I was very, always interested in athletics as well. And um, I was also interested in theater. So mm. I did a lot of the, um, theatrical uh, design work for the theater department and did almost every single cover design for every play throughout the four years that I was at Capitol. My heavens. So, did a lot. That's of, a lot of playbills. I have a lot of cover <laughs> designs, yeah. Uh, in terms of art education and getting doing your preparation to become a teacher, how often were you in schools? Was that only during mm. your teaching, your student teaching experience, or were you there more often than that? Yeah, it's sad to say that back at, at that time, we had, um, I think it was eight weeks in the elementary student teaching, uh -huh. and eight weeks in a, a high school or secondary uh -huh. student teaching. Other than that, very little. We mostly used each other, and we teach lessons to the other mm. people in the class, mm -hmm. which I think that's a not a very good practice, <laughs> um, and that's not the way that we do it at Towson, but um, at that time, that's what we did. Uh -huh. yeah. So you really were not familiar with interacting with students? No, but uh, fortunately, because of all my summers working at camps, uh -huh. which I also did arts and crafts at camp, um, I had a lot of experience working with children. And um, it's, it's funny to me, one of the things I like to joke around with my students about is when they get their placements, uh -huh. they'll get placements in um, elementary schools and also secondary schools, and they they're so worried about getting there on time and finding their way and um, getting lost and all these different things. And I just think it's funny because when I was student teaching, I was in a different state, so I didn't even know anything about the roads <laughs> and. There were there were no cell phones. Right. There were well, there was you know no computer to give you the uh, directions, uh, no uh, navigation systems, and um, I can remember many times pulling over the side of the road and trying to find a phone booth, which people don't even know what those are, but <laughs> uh, trying to find a phone booth to tell um, to call the school to say you know I had a flat tire or I'm lost, and uh, I just think it's interesting how how much has changed. Indeed. Because of technology. Yes. So uh, that's yeah. sort of a sidebar, but I just No, to say I that. think it's important, though, <laughs> and it talks about the experience then and the experience now. And yeah. it's an interesting point of contrast. Yeah. So um, <laughs> you do some coursework, maybe some basic education courses, and would you have students other than art education students in those classes? No, we, we were. We had enough people that we were, had a strictly art education I see. program. Okay, but um, I think Towson's program is so much stronger. But uh, we had to cover all of the studio courses and all uh -huh. of the um, art history courses, mm -hmm. and then also all the general education courses as well. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a packed full degree, which I think is probably still true today. Yeah, seems to be that way for educators. Well, here at Towson, our, our art education degree is, is the only five-year uh, degree that on campus. Uh -huh. So, and, and it's really because we have so many uh, demands um, from the state, but also if a student's going to be certified K through 12, there's so many different art forms mm -hmm. within visual art that 
uh, it's very, you can't leave anything out. No, so not at all. Mm -hmm. What do you recall about your student teaching experiences when you were going through? Making a lot of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like having the, 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 the things in the kiln blow up and things okay. like that. Yeah, I remember, but I also remember uh, really, really knowing that I had picked the right uh, area to be right. in and the right career. And I always felt very happy because I'm so passionate about the importance of the arts for children and uh, how essential it is to a complete education. And so I think that because I have such a, a um, passion for my, my area and such strong views on why it's important for all children to have art education, um, that it, it helps me to continue on all these years uh -huh. and, and sort of never lose sight of the goal uh -huh. of um, bringing as much art to children as possible. Right. So, and I'm also involved in arts integration. So uh, both of those areas, um, you know, I'm not, I think dance, theater, and music, and poetry mm -hmm. are all extremely important for children to experience. Mm -hmm. When you student taught, did you have, did you leave that experience with a sense of what age group you would prefer to work with? You know, I have, I have worked with all age groups now. Um, I, and I honestly can say that each one is so unique and special that I, I really can't say that I have a favorite. But, mm. um, so I was pretty much just waiting to see where the openings were. Uh -huh. And I, I had an offer in Columbus, but decided to come back to Baltimore, I see. and um, was offered a position in, with Baltimore County, uh -huh. and then also offered a position with Baltimore City, um, and uh, took the one in the county only because it, I, um, at the time, my father had a big influence on me and told me that he would pr prefer that I be in the county. Uh -huh. So I did what he wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that first experience when you got back to Baltimore and your this is your well, first experience as an art teacher. Well, John Crossan was our supervisor and uh, Jim Lobheimer, and it turns out that when I was hired, they were both out of town <laughs> on uh, oh, no. vacation, and so I was hired by um, and I can't remember the gentleman's name now, even though I have it on a contract at home, <laughs> and uh, he. Um, he was very impressed with my portfolio, and uh, said, "Well, I'm just I'm just going to hire you." And my first school was Seventh District Elementary School, way up at the Maryland Pennsylvania line. Uh -huh. And uh, it was interesting because the very first day of school, I had gone in a couple weeks beforehand to set up my room. Uh -huh. But the very first day of school, I walked into the room, and John Crossan was sitting on my desk, <gasps> and he wanted to find out who this person was they hired, oh, and they were no. away. But we became very good friends and loved working together for many years. So I was in Baltimore County for about seven and a half years. Uh -huh. And did you stay at the same school? I, I was there and I was also at Hernwood Elementary for a while mm -hmm. in Randallstown. Mm -hmm. so, but that was like when they split, I would, had a split assignment for a couple of years. Uh -huh. So I had well, to do and that's enrollment. Yes, I was going to say, and yeah. that's what, if you're in a specialty area, right. that often happens. Right. Is that you, and that's difficult. It is to, difficult. to be working in two schools. Yeah, at I the was same very time. happy when the enrollment went up and up at Seventh District again for me to be back there full time. Mm -hmm. So now, um, did you do anything administrative while you were in public ed K twelve? Well, I did. Um, I did, a, a number of people had uh, suggested that I think about going into administration. Mm -hmm. And so I decided that I, I, well, first of all, the first thing that I did was get my master's almost immediately, the very first year of teaching. Mm. I started my master's at Towson. Whoa. And that's really hard. New yeah. teacher, starting master's degree, same. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I was uh, really wanted to do it. And I also, I really hadn't taken photography when I was um, an undergrad and the school that I was in, 7th District, had a dark room and all the materials mm. for photography and they wanted a photo program. And it was an open space school but the art room was enclosed fortunately mm -hmm. and so was uh, the photography studio area. And um, 
So I quickly signed up for a photo class uh, with Haig Janion, who is still here at Towson, mm -hmm. one of my uh, colleagues. And uh, that was my first course towards my master's. And I think that's the reason I started so fast. Sure. Was because I needed to learn how to use that dark room. Right. So. Hmm. That is interesting. <laughs> so that master's degree was in? Art education uh -huh. here at Towson. And uh, we have a fantastic art department. We have for all these years. Um, and I learned so much from uh, the professors here and really helped. I, I really think professional development is so key to all teachers. And uh, even once the, the requirement is over, I always feel that people should continue taking classes mm -hmm. and growing and learning. Well, yeah. it's because new stuff happens. Yeah. Definitely. It just does. Uh, you were going to tell us a little bit about oh, your move. Yes. Oh, well, a minute. So I was thinking about going into, after I finished my master's, uh, which I believe was in 77, I decided that I would um, uh, go into um, the administrative track, and I took the phases that they had in Baltimore County, and it was for administration and supervision. I took phase one and did very well. And then I took phase two and I did well again. And then they invited me to take phase three. But at that point I really uh, knew in my heart that I wanted to stay in the classroom. Uh -huh. And that teaching was my passion. Uh -huh. So I, it's funny because now I do a lot of administrative work and even to this day it's not my favorite. I can do it, uh -huh. but I prefer to teach and I prefer to work with students. That's that's where I get excited. That's an interesting, and, and that program is still in place. The phases, do you know? I don't know. Um, I know there's something really in place, but I don't know if it's uh -huh. still that. And by phase, was that like sort of like coursework or training or? Yes, and actually, you could you could choose to get it for credit or not. And I did it through the It was through the University of Maryland College Park. Uh huh was who they has, had that link to. Sure. To well, Towson didn't have anything, I think, at that point in time yeah. to, to offer Baltimore County. Right. So you sort of explored that. Yeah. You decided that wasn't exactly where you wanted to be. Well, and the other thing that happened was that as I was finishing up, um, Jim Flood, who was then chair of uh, the art department, I was finishing my master's and also I, I can't remember exactly the timing. Right. Um, invited me to teach at Towson. Mm. So it was all. It was in 1980 that I did my first. Um, uh, um, I guess you would call it adjunct mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. uh, teaching art in the child, oh. and I did that for a number of years, um, and I was. It worked out very well for me because I was getting ready to start a family. Uh huh. And uh, so I stopped teaching in Baltimore County and was a stay-at-home mother most of the time, but uh -huh. a couple days a week I taught at Towson. Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah. So you kept your hand in it yes, anyway. Yes, I did. Um, but after a certain amount of time, that becomes more of a full-time well, job. Definitely it did. Now, did you go back to Baltimore County after you had your children? No. Um, I was, Towson was offering me more and more courses, and I have to laugh, I, I've saved every contract, <laughs> and when I look at how much I was paid, uh -oh. it's just uh, really shocking. <laughs> that it's almost like you were working for free, uh -huh. and, uh, but I loved it so much. And so I was teaching, many, some semesters teaching five classes, oh teaching two sections of art in the child and three sections of art for early childhood. Mm. Because Art for Early Childhood at the time only had two credits associated with it. Oh. So um, I was teaching 12 credits, mm -hmm. though, for a long time before I was ever uh, made into a lecturer. Mm -hmm. And so that was... So somebody offered you, said you're doing all this full time and this would be, it would be more appropriate if you did this as a lecturer. Yeah, it was a little bit had competitive. Had a full time. To get the lectureship, there are a lot of different people in the department had people in their areas that they wanted to get mm -hmm. the lectureship, so I was very fortunate, I thought. Well, it sounds like you had some folks that really wanted you to be here yeah. and probably campaigned on your behalf. Yeah. You know, it's funny, though, at that time, uh, a lecturer didn't get any benefits. Right. 
And so I was a lecturer for many years with no benefits. And so I'm happy, though, for the lecturers now who yes. uh, are getting better pay, much mm -hmm. better pay, actually, mm -hmm. and benefits. Mm -hmm. So, Well, I think it's probably a little more appropriate than yeah. how that lecturer position started out. Yeah. Yeah, then they made me a senior lecturer and then right. all these different things, visiting a professor and, you know, visiting assistant professor, different different. Because I, I, I feel like I've held, held almost every position you could hold at Towson. <laughs> so finally I got a tenure track position. Uh huh. Now, at some point, Dr. Broadwater, mm -hmm. you started uh, to pursue a PhD. Yes. And so, what, what spurred well, have, that action? Yeah, well, I have, um, I have four sons. Uh huh. Um, and the last two are twins. Ah. And uh, see, I, I wanted a daughter, and I got two more sons. <laughs> but I'm, I'm crazy about them. But anyway, uh, so I was really very busy. Uh huh. And also teaching at Towson a couple days a week. And I was very fortunate because I my parents helped me uh -huh. uh, to watch the children one day a week, and then my husband was off one day during the week. So we were very fortunate that way. But. Um, uh, so what happened was when my, when my twins got to middle school, they went to Sudbrook Magnet Middle School, very good school at the time anyway, and I, I assume it's still good. Um, they, um, I decided that I didn't want to just be a lecturer, um, that I did want to, I was doing an awful lot for the art department, and I wanted to, um, become a tenure track employee. Mm -hmm. And I was encouraged, mm -hmm. and m many of the people in the art department wrote letters yes. helping me get into a doctoral program. And so I, I felt like, to be honest, it it's kind of sounds uh, strange, but I think that's the most remarkable thing I've ever done, uh, was to go back and get my doctorate. Mm -hmm. um, because it was a tremendous uh, amount of work, a tremendous challenge. And uh, I was juggling so many things at once, mm -hmm. but I was determined. And it's amazing what you can do when you are have drive and determination. Exactly. Yeah, indeed. So, um, and mm -hmm. you did that at? I did that at. Um, actually, our current president was our dean, mm -hmm. um, Marvin Leschke. And she had told me about Union Institute and University. Mm -hmm. And she had told me it's in Cincinnati, Ohio, and that it was a possibility to do a lot of it distance learning uh, right. or take courses here that would transfer into the uh, program there. Uh -huh. So I applied. I was accepted. And you had to do a certain amount of residency there. And I, it and just worked out. I, I just, was going to say, how did you manage that? I just did it bird by bird, you know, bit <laughs> by bit. I didn't try to, I did, uh, that's one of the things that I think my personal philosophy is uh, do the next first thing. <laughs> Don't try to figure out all the things that you, if you start dwelling on everything at once, you'll be overwhelmed and not be able to be productive. So I've, I've sort of learned to compartmentalize and to do the next first thing that I need to do uh -huh. and then move to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And it, it's worked out. And it worked for you. Yeah. And I Absolutely. tell my student teachers that now too. Not to look at the whole semester, but look at this today. What is it that we need to get done today? And uh, what can we do to prepare for tomorrow? But don't try to think about, uh, well, what about you know six weeks from now? Because mm -hmm. you'll just be too overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Now you have been here for, and I was trying to do the math, I think it was something like 17 years and... Since I was full-time. Yeah, yeah, full-time. Yeah. And how has what you are doing changed over time? Well, it's changed a lot. We're, um, you know, we're doing much more in the area of assessment. Uh-huh. Um, and it's really not that I enjoy I uh, counting up numbers and and figuring out um, uh, where we stand um, in that way, but it's something that's uh, required and necessary, and so and I do see value in it. Mm 
Um, it's not like I do not think it's valuable, but I sometimes wonder if we're doing too much of it. But because um, it's very difficult to uh, quantify a qualitative area, mm -hmm. and it's very difficult to put a number on, for example, a teacher exemplar, mm -hmm. something that they've created. Mm -hmm. I so I find it a little bit difficult in some ways, but. Um, that's one area. And the other area is that we uh, are much more uh, heavily into planning. Mm -hmm. And um, we do backwards design planning. And we always start out with the big idea and the essential questions and the enduring understandings. And we have our students think deeply about what they're doing. There seems to be a real um, uh, discussion going on now in art education between uh, the more formalist or traditional approach mm -hmm. and the more conceptual approach. And there's, it's almost like there's two camps. Mm -hmm. And uh, people I know who are writing the standards right now, the new standards, are that's the battle that's going on. I see. And we have that in our department. And I, I think the greatest thing about the art department at Towson is we have, a, uh, at least the art education program, is it's a very holistic view. And we try to incorporate all the different aspects and give our students a sampling of everything and let them sort of land where they feel most comfortable. Um, I, I, I really tell my students all the time that they're the best teacher they can be. Like, like you, you're not supposed to be like someone else. Mm -hmm. You need to work out of your strengths. Mm -hmm. So whatever your strengths are, that's what um, we want to encourage. So. Uh, that's why I kind of like to give the students a, a broad array of views, and then they can see where, where, where they fit in best. Right, mm -hmm. where they're comfortable. Yeah, theoretically. Yeah. Now, one of the things you mentioned earlier, that in your own student teaching, that's really sort of when you went into schools, mm -hmm. was when you were really sort of beginning to be responsible for the classroom and the teaching. Right. Um, how has that changed? How is Towson's art education program different from what you encountered? Oh, it's, well, one of the things about our program is we're very community-based. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have, many years ago, even before I was a lecturer, we, um, I, I was fortunate enough to uh, form a partnership with uh, New Song Academy in Baltimore City, mm -hmm. which is a partnership that's still going very strong to this day. And it's exciting to me because the elementary ed program is still in partnership with them through art education. Mm -hmm. And now art education is as well. So we have a, uh, both, both the College of Ed and the College of Fine Arts and Communication are part of that partnership. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. And, um, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm doing an interview for them <laughs> in a few weeks for uh, they're trying to uh, raise funds for their program. Mm -hmm. But um, so uh, we go, the very first, um, the, the, the art education, the final three semesters of art education mm -hmm. are all um, out in the community. Mm. The, um, so that it's not just the last semester, it's right. three semesters. And the, the first semester, uh, we do a number of visits to different schools, and we also have children who are bused here to Towson, and that's the program that I started called University Students and Center City Youth Connecting Through Art. And we have several schools that now are bused to Towson where our students then teach a very well-planned and, and vetted art lesson. Uh -huh. and, um, and then the students, uh, you know, go back to their home school. Most of these schools don't have an art program that we've chosen to mm -hmm. work with. So the school provides the buses, Towson provides the art materials, the place, the teaching, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, a, it's a true partnership. Mm -hmm. um, everyone, is, it's a win-win. And um, we've been very, very fortunate that it's, it, I can't talk enough about that partnership with New Song has been just the hugest blessing to me. Mm. Um, and uh, the other thing that, the other goal in doing that partnership was we wanted to demystify the
the college experience for the um, Center City youth With, mm -hmm. by coming here and they're sitting next to college students because sometimes they're serving as teachers but sometimes they're just serving as peers mm -hmm. in the same art activity and it's really fun to see the students realize that maybe theirs is even better than some of the college students or or they can hold their <laughs> own and they're very uh, excited and we've had quite a good uh, number of them uh, either come to Towson or go to other schools so a lot of I, I feel that we've made an impact for uh -huh. those kids in wanting to go to college so the students the the university students are serving as teachers in that capacity yeah, yes but not all sometimes, but sometimes they're serving as additional as, students as additional students in the group so that's one of the ways in which they're participating in in schools even though they're actually not in the school right but we also go there uh-huh um, and right now we have a new partnership with Ace Academy. It's a high school, and that's been working out very well. But they've also been coming here because uh, it's a high school, and they they have like a college or career day okay. every Thursday. Mm -hmm. So they've been coming to us on on Thursdays when they come. So, so yeah. at what point do art educate well pre service art educators start actually teaching in the school? Is that well, then the following year, now they, granted, they teach several lessons. We call them workshops. Uh huh. They do workshops in that very first semester. Uh huh. And, the, and they're actually teaching. The next semester, they have two field experiences. Um, and those are each seven, six weeks long, but I count seven because they go to visit the school first and just observe. Uh huh. And then they teach six lessons. Uh huh. And so they create a unit and they teach in a small group of either two or three students. Mm. And uh, yeah, we just saw those presentations today and they were really nice. exciting. And they do, so they do one elementary experience and one secondary. And this year, all of our placements were in Baltimore City. In mm -hmm. the past, we've had some in Baltimore County, but this now we've found enough city schools that we are able to partner with. And I think it's good because a lot of times our students might not student teach in the city, even though we do have a number who do, but I like the idea of them having an experience with urban kids. Sure. So it's it's, it's uh, been very very um, uh, good for everybody, I think. So that's in their second semester. Yes. They put together these units. They units. plan units, and uh, the first unit is heavily art, uh, visual art based. But the second unit, the secondary unit, uh -huh. is is integrated arts integration so they have to integrate it with whatever class they're in so like one group had the challenge of being in an algebra classroom uh -huh. another group uh, was in a Spanish classroom uh -huh. and, and so then they have to um, another group was in English language arts so whatever classroom they're assigned to because you remember the school doesn't have an art teacher so they're not assigned right. to the art room I see they're assigned to a classroom uh -huh. and they have to uh, meet with the classroom teacher, find out, or the subject area teacher, find out what they're learning and uh -huh. what, they're, what their goals are, and then try to match that up with an art lesson. Wow. And the, the lessons are s fantastic. So. Now, is it, do no Baltimore City Schools have art teachers? Oh no, many do, ah. uh, but there's many that do not. I see. So, uh, it's a mixed bag. Uh-huh. Yeah. So we sort of look for those that would um, be good partners and that would um, uh, be excited about having us come there. Yeah, and they usually are. Absolutely. Before this year, we often, for years and years, we used parochial schools mm -hmm. because they had a more flexible schedule and they could accommodate our schedule better. I see. But um, there, was, there, were, there were reasons that, that we felt that the urban public school was better for our students. So we've switched mm -hmm. over 100% now mm -hmm. to that. But when it comes to that student teaching semester, that extended internship semester, um, most of those placements are in Baltimore County? No, we're no? everywhere. We oh. are in, well, for example, I have 35 student teachers going out this spring. Uh -huh. I have to get uh, 35 elementary placements and 35 secondary placements. Mm. And we are in Montgomery County, mm. we're in Howard County, we're in Prince George's County, 
Anne Arundel County, Carroll County, Frederick County, Baltimore County, Baltimore City, Hartford County, Cecil County. Mm. We have partnerships with all of these counties, and uh, and they're and, and and it's a very warm relationship with Towson. Mm -hmm. And probably the, one of the other things that I'm most excited about is our placement rate. Um, we've had over 90 percent since since I've been the coordinator. Um, of our students that have been hired in positions um, since um, I've, I've been working there. I don't know what the, the ratio was before that, mm -hmm. but it's been really but exciting to see so many people play. Some years we've had 99% or mm. almost close to 100. Mm -hmm. um, so, and when they call you on the phone, they tell you that they were hired. I get goosebumps up and down <laughs> my arms. I'm so happy. So. So you have alums everywhere. Uh, everywhere. We have a tremendous number of alums in art education. Now, does this mean um, in most schools, there, if there's an art teacher, it's one art teacher? And does that mean that you place only one student in that school? Yes. That's why we're not part of the PDS. But we, do, we are um, in some of the PDS schools. Uh -huh. But because there's so many, there's only one art teacher in the right. elementary school. Uh-huh. Uh, we we have to go everywhere. Yes. And in the high schools, some middle schools have three mm. or two or three, and some high schools have three or four mm. art teachers. Uh huh. So that's that's nice. Sometimes we can get two art teachers at the same secondary placement. Right. So so that is good. Mm -hmm. um, what haven't we talked about in regard to the program that you want to share with us? Well. Um, I, I, I guess that I had mentioned that our holistic philosophy and our philosophy of being a part of the community. Um, also, and I, th I think that um, I think it's just really important that um, we we try to cover so much that we often run out of time with all the things that we we want to go through in the program um, between the lesson planning, the unit planning, uh, understanding aesthetics, understanding art criticism, how to talk about art with your students, um, understanding arts integration, having a real understanding, a, a deep understanding of it, not just some sort of surface understanding. Um, so uh, and understanding the child and the stages of artistic development and what to expect from children at certain stages. Uh, not that we categorize children, but it's a good idea to have an idea of what generally uh, you can expect from a certain age group. Sure. Uh, there's just so much to cover. It's, it's kind of shocking if people, uh, sometimes people don't understand how much content there is in our field. Mm -hmm. Just the whole aspect of our history mm -hmm. and connecting art history to art education is tremendous. Um, uh, and then, you know, we also have to prepare our students for the Praxis exam. Um, and is there a, a, a content exam in art? Yes. Mm. And uh, there used to be two, and now they've combined them. Mm. And I believe the number is 0 0.0135. And uh, it, it covers all different studio aspects, um, all different art history aspects, uh, materials management, uh, safety. It covers um, art criticism, understanding talking about art, and aesthetics, understanding, um, you know, being able to talk about a work of art and why um, it's valuable and who it would be valued by. Mm -hmm. Understanding uh, the context in which a, a work of art is created um, and there's just understanding visual culture, pop culture. I could go on and on. Mm -hmm. The periods of art. Mm -hmm. All of this is, is part of the exam. Good grief. And, uh, and part of our program. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have like a 99% pass rate. So. Great. That was going to be my next question. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing pretty well there. Doing very well there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exciting. I mean, that's really a, testim a testimonial to the program. And we, yes, and the whole faculty works together. It's not me. It's, 
It, I, I give credit many times to our entire art faculty. The studio people will do so much to prepare our art educators. Uh -huh. The art history people do so much. They're fantastic to prepare our art educators. And then the art education uh, faculty just kind of right. do the finishing touches. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, you are very actively involved in what well, we know in schools um, beyond the campus, but also in your professional organizations. And it's my understanding that you won a number of awards from those, <laughs> those learned groups. Would you like to talk a little bit about that? Well, um, I'm the um, higher education person. Um, on the uh, uh, on the board of the Maryland Art Education Association, mm -hmm. and I've had that position for quite a while now. Um, and then I don't even know how long actually. And um, I'm also very involved in the National Art Education Association, and I really encourage our students to be involved. In fact, our our student chapter, we have a, a National Art Education Association student chapter. We've mm, had that for about seven nice. years. And in 2010, we won the National Student Chapter of the Year, and that's quite competitive. So that was a big thrill for our program. Um, and I guess, I think it was in 2008, I was the recipient of the Ziegfeld Award, um, which was given through the uh, United States Society of Education Through Art. Mm. And it's a very interesting uh, group that's sort of an under, under, it's under the heading of the NAEA, mm -hmm. and uh, it, I think that had to, a lot to do with my program with New Song Academy, uh, because there it's it's a pro, it's someone who's contributed to art education in a unique way, mm. and also in a way that um, has reached out to others um, in the community, mm -hmm. and then also um, I. Um, have been involved in an orphanage in Liberia, Africa, mm. which um, Towson actually sent me there two years ago to, um, maybe it was three years now, <laughs> to do professional development with 21 teachers there in the area of arts integration. And that was a really exciting uh, experience. Amazing. And um, I was able to do that, and I'm looking forward to going back again as soon mm. as as soon as I have a little bit of time, uh -huh. but um, it was really exciting. Um, I actually got a phone call the other day from one of the, the art teacher at this particular school that I was visiting, New Hope, and he said, when are you coming back? Um, he said, we've used all of your ideas now. <laughs> you, we, we need some new, new ideas. <laughs> so I thought that was really neat, so I, I'd like to go there and do some more professional development with those people. Wow. Yeah. That's a little bit far away. Yeah. Like over the ocean. Very so. exciting, though. That's wonderful. Yeah. So. And there's the poverty there is so tremendous, so tremendous that, uh, you know, it, it, it opened my eyes to uh, a, a level of poverty that I had not even known existed. Uh huh. And the fact that the children just value a, a pencil. Uh huh or one piece of hard candy, and they were absolutely thrilled. Uh -huh. uh, no electricity, everything's with generators. The, the country's in, in terrible disarray uh -huh. uh, because of the 14 years of civil war that they had. And they're slowly rebuilding. But um, it, 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 it's, it's really humbling, and it's exciting to see that they actually, at this school, it's so, it, it actually makes me laugh because here's a school that's in the, immense poverty, and yet they hired an art teacher. This is before <laughs> I even got there. And yet we have schools right here in the states that do not have art teachers. So I, I found that to be uh -huh. really interesting about what people value. Exactly. Well, somebody probably was instrumental in convincing them about that, the value mm -hmm. of art. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like maybe you influenced that mm -hmm. to some de degree. Maybe so. encouraged it a little. Yeah. 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 Um, Kay, we have one last question. Okay. We ask everybody, okay. and that is um, to ask you what kind of advice, what wisdom would you share with students who are individuals who are considering a career as a teacher? Could be certainly an art teacher, but 
just in a general sense too, what kinds of thoughts would you share with them? Well, I have a lot of thoughts, but um, <laughs> uh, probably the most important thing, in my opinion, if you're preparing to be a teacher, is that you be, and I said this a little earlier, but work out of your own strengths. Be, look at who you are, what, what is it that you value, and be intentional about um, sharing those things with your students. If you're excited about what you're teaching, the children are going to be excited about it. I always say that it planning, you need, you have to be committed. You know, when we think about the dispositions mm -hmm. of caring, commitment, and collaboration, those three things are really, really good guideposts mm -hmm. for anyone going into education. If you don't really care about children, well, then you really don't belong in education. No. You need to deeply care about children and about their futures and about our future, our, our, you know, both nationally, globally. You need to look at the big picture. And, um, and then commitment. And commitment means, you know, you don't run out the door just because the time is up if there's still something that needs to be done. Commitment is, is getting there early and staying late, if need be. Um, it's seriously considering how important you are as an educator, how many lives you influence. It, 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 it's like a ripple effect. It goes out and out and out and out every time you have a strong impact on a child. So I think that that's another area, like the commitment piece. And then being able to collaborate with your colleagues, with the community. And so I, I mean, I know I didn't make up those three dispositions. Mm -hmm. I actually think that people here at Towson did, though. But I think they're really good guideposts for all of us. And um, uh, no matter what field you're in. Mm -hmm. um, and then I do think it's important, too, to as much as possible, and I'm probably the worst person to be able to, to be saying this, <laughs> but to try to balance your life uh -huh. and not be not be a workaholic, take a little bit of time, because um, if you are burned out, then you're going to, uh, that will affect your students. Sure. So it's important to take care of yourself. And, uh, and also, like I said earlier, that whole professional development piece is so important. You, just reading the current literature, keeping up to date with current trends, Understanding, like right now with the Common Core, um, with the STEAM and the STEM and all of these things, mm -hmm. um, it's so important for for all of us to stay on top of what's happening. Even though sometimes it's only a nuance of change mm -hmm. to what you were doing before, um, we can all learn and grow. And that's another thing: is not don't beat yourself up if you have a bad lesson, or even if you have a bad week. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. Uh, sometimes things don't work out the way they're supposed to. So brush yourself off and, and give it the good college try again. Um, so I really believe that, um, that it's really important to allow yourself to make mistakes. You know, one thing in art education that's really key, too, that I didn't say earlier is, um, and I think probably the scholar Elliot Eisner from Stanford University uh, expressed this better than anyone else, but he, he had... Uh, has a list of 10 things that the arts can do that nothing else can do. But one of the things is that there's just not one correct answer. Mm -hmm. That there's many correct answers to, a, to an art problem. Uh -huh. And that's another reason why it's hard to quantify. But anyway, yes. um, there's many correct answers and that um, we're looking for that person that's going to come up with the new answer. We're mm -hmm. looking for that creativity. Mm -hmm. And we're not, we don't know sometimes what we're looking for right. until the answer comes to us. And so I think that it's very important not to uh, limit children and to allow them to be all that they can be. And one of the things we um, really promote in our program is the idea of giving art problems that don't have only one right answer. We don't want things to be identical, carbon copies of mm -hmm. each other. We want the child to be able to take the problem at hand and then 
through creative problem solving, um, come up with a good solution or a solution that they like. So that's really important. Mm -hmm. um, and this has been a good career choice for you, art teacher? Yes, very much so. I, you know, being at the university level has a lot of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's been, it's not been all easy uh, to teach at the university level. I've, you know, had some really rough experiences. Things have taken a toll on me in some ways. But I'm so passionate about what I do and the students that I work with. Mm -hmm. And our students are amazing that, um, that I, have, I keep my focus there and try not to worry about the politics so much. Um, yeah, there was one other thing I wanted to mention about um, our students, and that is that um, because our program was growing so large, um, we started screening the last few years. Mm -hmm. And that's been a really interesting uh, experience because the caliber of our students is, is just getting better and better because of the screening. Mm -hmm. um, we are able to select students who have a very, very strong portfolio. Mm -hmm. And uh, so our art our, our, our teachers that we are graduating from Towson are truly artists, artists, teachers. Mm -hmm. And they're not just uh, someone that couldn't make it as an artist and then decided, well, I guess I'll teach. Mm -hmm. There's no one like that in our program. Every single one of those students could make it as an artist if that's the path they chose. Mm -hmm. But um, they've decided that they wanted to teach their craft. Mm -hmm. and Wonderful. So I think that's exciting, too. It is. Well, thank you so much for sharing some time with us. Oh, I enjoyed it. Great. I didn't think I would enjoy it, but I did. <laughs> well, wonderful. <laughs> thank you, Karen.